Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm sitting here with my friend Victor. So can you start? Hello guys. As you all know, I'm Victor Okunola yeah. Adenika. <laughs> <laughs> so today we'll be talking about admission requirements for Nigerian universities. How do you, um, you know, apply for admissions in schools like? prestigious universities like U Highway, U and other Highway Law and other schools like that and possible requirements, the scores you have to target and all that is going to be my quest. Mr. Victor, so what do you think are the requirements for getting admissions into Nigerian universities? I think we should start from the basis. Okay. The first thing should be you getting to know what to actually want to do. <laughs> well, there are, there are a lot of factors I think that should be a video for me that they choose your career yeah. because there are a lot of factors to that. Your family, your personal, talents and skills and all of this. So to what we are talking about today, well there are three major um three major departments you can go to when you're in secondary school. Okay. And that's science departments, arts and humanities social sciences or commercial people call it commercial departments so um and courses on the sciences as you all know are courses like engineering mm -hmm. mathematics um medicine medicine and other medical courses, courses um agriculture yeah agriculture computer science physics a lot there are a lot yeah then um arts and humanities you are free to go and do something on mass communication um law yeah as most people like to do, do law yeah, yeah you english, can do english linguistics english lots a lot under commercial we have then under commercial social science we have accounting political science um economics yeah uh which other ones i don't i don't know business more. admin yes, and nutrition yeah. and lots lots more we have things like sociology yeah well, sociology is like a link between the arts department and commercial and commercial because department. social science and arts students can also choose to do depending on their course combination uh, combinations yeah, yeah. in secondary school you understand yeah. because it's like sociology in fact um political science so is open to to both of them i think that's that's about that and then when you have decided about um the departments you want to go the next thing should be what exactly do you want to do? Because those courses, there are varying combinations for them. Yeah. Um, let me start from sciences. I'll be talking about the main main courses, like engineering, main courses medicine. in those uh, departments. Let's start from the sciences. Let's say you want to go for engineering, at least at um, secondary school level, you're going to be taking courses on English, mathematics, civic education, main core courses. One is trade entrepreneurship. That's four main courses. And you're going to be taking um, your departmental um, subjects like physics, chemistry, biology, agriculture. Yeah. That's making it. Then there's one more, which is um, what is it? Physics, chemistry, agriculture, biology, and husbandry for some people. That's one change in the premiership. And you may choose to do uh, economics or do for the mathematics. For the mathematics. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, you may even choose to do technical drawing. Let's say you want to go into architecture yeah. or engineering, for say. So then at the jump level, you have to register. The, the courses I just mentioned, or the subjects I just mentioned for at secondary school level, at its um cut across all, all subjects yeah all courses in uh under sciences so when you get to the jam level that's where the problem arises you can go on online and check out the your subjects specific, called combination yeah, for your yeah. specific courses yeah. what you want to study and their brochures in fact when you go to register for your champ the utma as you call it now they will give you an e brochure on dates like this. Then you go home, look up your course, and then you see the subject combinations on that. Let's say for uh, medicine, medicine and surgery, subject combination for all medical sciences, for all medical courses, they are usually English, chemistry, 
physics and biology those yeah. who Very but if you're going for um engineering or more technical engineering courses let's say engineering mathematics and i think computer sciences or yeah. physics and electronics you have to take courses in english physics mathematics and chemistry yeah that means you are leaving um biology, biology out of it yeah. because biology is more of um medical medicine yeah, yeah, you understand yeah. so that's called completion for that then moving to um arts and humanities i think the main courses for arts and humanities at um secondary school levels are usually the four core courses i just mentioned english mathematics civic education and what really eventually can be animal boundary diam teaching bookkeeping yeah. Anyone, it depends on the one your school is capable of doing. Yeah. It can even be photography or anyone. You understand? All time so, right. um, that's the four main courses. And then, my mental courses for, um, what do they call it? For arts and humanities should be literature, um, government, government, economics, um, which other one? We choose to do, uh, there's one more way. It's, it's, it's free. Yeah. You can, but the main course should be, and one religious studies. That should be either CRS. Yeah, yeah, CRS. All right. IRS. Yeah. yeah, as I can remember. So that's that about that at um, secondary school level. But for your jump, you have to be careful with uh, social sciences and humanities. <laughs> Let me talk about social sciences first before going to jump requirements. At secondary school level, you have to take courses, the four main core courses, and then you have to take departmental courses on commerce, accounting. Sometimes you take, yeah, you must take economics, and then any other. You may choose to take one language, maybe Yoruba, and ask students who can take a language depending if they want to go. And it's even compulsory for them Yoruba. You have to just check your job and your your course requirements on that approach so that's very very important. important so that you don't end up not getting admission <laughs> exactly because yeah. that's one of the mistakes most yeah. people do they just do a course let's say let's say i want to do engineering and i feel like i want to do jambo so which course will i pass the most of and i choose english because it's compulsory i choose chemistry because i can even pass it's not hard and because physics is hard i will now remove, it. I will now remove physics or mathematics i'm not put a Greek because you are free to choose any any subjects you want to do any subject you are free to choose anyone and I choose a Greek and I even put civic education <laughs> you know that you are going <laughs> you're going nowhere yeah so you have to be very very careful about that there, there was this guy that wanted to study architecture school but because his called subjects combination during jump was wrong it was not given the course and in fact it was very lucky because you know it's Nigeria correction works, mm. so he was lucky and they had to give him a course rather than a picture. So you have to be careful when choosing your subject combination. That's why you have to be very vigilant and very meticulous when selecting your courses. You understand? Now, at the UTME level, let's say the admission process per se, um, the first thing is passing your champ. After getting your subject combination rightly, then you have to choose a school you want to go to. Let's say you choose Ju High University of Ibadan, University of Ilori, Oyinju. Um, those are federal universities. There are federal universities. There are state universities like Lautic, Inogomosho, Inyosho, and Inoshogo here. Ekiti State University, Kwara State University. Um, big house university and there are private universities like yeah. um Adeliki, Adeliki, Covenant, Covenant, and Redeemers, Landmark, and a lot of others. And now depending on <laughs> and as these things are let me say let me put it in this order like from federal to, to state to and to private, that's how easier it is yeah. to gain admission to those universities. You, you understand the other. Okay, let me put it the other it is to gain universities to gain admission to these universities are from Fair private okay. to state to, to federal universities because there are a lot of students that actually apply for admissions into federal universities it's in that order number one federal. one of the reasons is probably the low fee cost. yeah and that's 
bound to the, to the fact that they are um, in the federal universities, their cost or their tuition fees is very, very low. Understand? People are able to afford that. In fact, what you pay in federal investors, what you pay, let me put it, what you pay in state investors is enough in a year. What you pay in state investors in a year is enough to take you throughout the federal investors. Yeah. And in fact, what you pay in uh, st- uh, private, private investors in a year is even enough to take you throughout a state, a state university. University. That's how it works because of the cost. And that's why most people prefer to go to federal investors and that's why the competition too is is yeah. you understand so the first thing is choosing a university based on your ability and your budget mm-hmm. i you understand that based on what i've explained before now your aim is to passing the utme now the nuc approved 160 for universities yeah. 160 cut off mark for universities but it's not advisable for you to score 160, score 160 yeah. because you know there are a lot of people that will score more than 160 that will, there are even people that will score up to 300 yeah. 270 280 and that's how admission quota too works they pick people from the top you know they list your name in uh a ascending or descending order then they pick people through and will give course it's, it depends on the amount of students they want to admit in that school and depending on their scores they do a community frequency call and draw an OG to choose exactly the numbers they want to admit for that year and the others mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. so that's that's the way admission works now for you my advice for you is that number one tighten up your bed you know your subject combination right now and then you start reading things right now you aim at scoring more than 200 yeah. in your jam that's your very, that should very be your important aim. and then very importantly because this day they are using caps which um involves your whole level results too yeah so your whole level results should be good should be very 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 good too. like you having is and all that's how you can get into this top higher uh, universities. Top, top universities and even those competitive courses like medicine law accounting and all that you have to score you have to have a good whole level result because they are going to do a cumulative um cumulative scores of your whole level results and your um jump scores and in fact there are schools I don't know, some schools have scraped it also, but there are schools that even conduct post UME now. There, there used to be post UME before, but yeah. there are some schools that do not do it. Like in your Like you know, we don't it. do post UME. In I think where you are still doing it. Some schools are still. Yeah, yeah. Especially some schools, So that means the orders are still ahead of you because yeah. if you pass the order of your O level, you have good scores. Yeah, you have the, you pass the order of your UTME, you have good scores. You still have to pass the order of the pursuit CMA. Do you understand? That's how it basically works. And I hope you can do that. No problem. So thanks for coming along with us. Uh, a subscribe from you will be phenomenal. Thank you and God bless. Peace.